we had Mr. Dent on yesterday with his demographic cliff, and he was very bold and said he believes we're in a dead cat bounce. Within two weeks, the Chinese stock market is going to start racing down. He believes it'll pull the other major ones down and that there's going to be a real estate bubble popping by the end of this year. So we'll get Schiff's take on that. But I also want to walk through the election with Schiff, what he really thinks about Trump, um, what he thinks about Hillary. I mean, just the state of this country, how can there be confidence in anything when criminals are running absolutely free and the IRS is now persecuting over 100,000 people, admittedly jailing hundreds of people a year for their political views? That's now come out in her emails, how she's going to get Republicans and get conservatives. Peter Schiff's father is one of the most famous anti-New World Order patriots for people that are older. He's been in jail for, what is it, a decade. I don't mean to get into that story. We only mentioned it last time. He's been on the show probably 50 times. We never talked about it. He used to come on my show in 95, 96, 97, 98, right through the 2000s. And then the judge, federal judge said, you keep publishing your book saying the IRS is a fraud and a collection agency for the Federal Reserve. I'm going to put you in prison. He is in jail for the First Amendment. A true political prisoner. So so now we see this is happening, and they've issued one tax exemption to a conservative group in three years, 10,000 plus to Democrats. This is a tyranny, and it's bipartisan, but the Democrats are the tip of the spear. So I want to get your economic prognosis, uh, of course, Europac.com, billions under management, uh, host the Peter Schiff Show and a lot more, and find out details at Europac.com. I've thrown out probably 10 different stories or more since you've been holding five minutes. What would you like to tackle first? I mean, I'd kind of like to just get into politics first, just as an American, to get your view uh, on just all of this insanity. How much more crazy can it get? Well, probably the craziest thing is how popular Bernie Sanders is, right? I mean, you've got an admitted socialist who is drawing the largest crowds. Um, is that me? Yeah. I think that is you. It's okay. Yeah. Hey, it's he's, good to have a newsroom. It's, it's busy. It's yeah. a real world. He's getting the largest crowds. He's leading in some of the polls. I mean, most Democrats, you know, there, there are a lot of them that are socialists, but they don't come out of the closet. They don't admit it. This guy is not, you know, ashamed of being a socialist. And look how many Americans want to vote for him. He may be the Democratic front runner. Yeah, you know, and of course, you know, Hillary is self-destructing, so that's probably helping it. That's probably why Biden wants to get in, because he doesn't want to leave it to Bernie Sanders. He probably senses there's some vulnerability there. But, you know, the people, the Democrats want to jump all over the Republicans because of Donald Trump. But look at how many Democrats are going for Sanders. I remember I did that video last year at the Democratic National Convention. If you haven't seen it, it's on my YouTube channel. I've seen it. Yeah, and I asked if they would be in favor of a law banning corporate profits. And these were the delegates to the Democratic Convention, and they were in favor of it. They said, yeah, let's ban profits. They're all socialists there, and now you've got one of their own coming out and admitting it, and he's leading in the polls. This is where the nation is going. And you predicted it in that viral video. We'll play some of that at the bottom of the hour once we pull it up. But again, it's on the Peter Schiff uh, YouTube site. In fact, I'm glad you raised that because you were Ron Paul in the first campaign, Congressman Ron Paul's chief economic advisor uh, as a top Austrian um, economist in your own right. What would you be advising Rand Paul to get back in the lead to do right now if you were his advisor? Well, you know, my I gave Rand my advice. Hopefully, you know, he will heed it. I mean, I, I, I think it's good. But, you know, rather than attacking Donald Trump. Right? I don't think that is the right strategy. I, I don't think either. Donald Trump, Donald Trump is, 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 is hitting a nerve uh, where he is appealing to the people within the Republican Party who are fed up with both parties and who are fed up with career politicians and want something different. And I think a lot of those Donald Trump voters can really be Rand Paul voters in transition because Rand Paul is not a career politician. Just because he's a U.S. senator, he never was in politics until he won that seat. And he ran for Senate as an eye doctor, as a small businessman. That's how he needs yes. to run for president, the way he ran for Senate, because the field is crowded with career politicians. And the only one right now that's standing out is Donald Trump. 
But he needs to get those Trump voters. He needs to wait for those Trump voters to evolve and realize that the real outsider in this race, the real game changer, the real break from the establishment in the Republican Party and the Democratic Party is Rand Paul, not Donald Trump. Sure. And I mean, Trump's hooked in with the Democrats and all the rest of it. Do you think, though, Trump's for real? Because he is... You know, he has a big ego. To be successful, you got to have it. I mean, I think the guy's really smart. I like almost everything he's saying. Do you think, though, he might not just want to be a stepping stone for the Democrats and Hillary and Biden? I mean, maybe he really wants to be president. I mean, I think Donald Trump would be a lot better than Jeb Bush uh, or Hillary Clinton. Well, the, the bar is pretty low there. So, yeah, he might be. But, you know, he wouldn't be as good as, as, as Rand. But, I agree. You know, obviously, the guy would like to be president. I mean, who wouldn't want to be president if somebody just was going to make you president? The problem is getting elected. It's 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 very difficult. I don't think this is some kind of plant uh, to try to help uh, elect a Democrat. I mean, I, I don't think he's in it for that reason. Uh, but some of it might be ego. I mean, it's something that he might want to do. I mean, you know, it's one of the only things really you can't buy. I mean, Trump can have whatever is for sale. And, and generally, the White House is not at least not for the people who occupy it. Maybe the, the, it's for sale to the people who, uh, you know, who, who, um, who make all the, all the donations. But, you know, I, I think the candidacy really says a lot about, uh, you know, the country and where we are. I, I don't think he can win the nomination. I think when the field narrows, it will be harder. Sure, when you got 15 people and they're all the same and Trump's the only one that's different, he's like the none of the above vote. Right? I mean, exactly. He's not perfect. But if you're out in the ocean, a, a, a piece of driftwood is, is like an oasis. And so Trump's the only one that's not a complete, you know, buffoon, uh, anti-American piece of garbage. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the things that he says are right. He's right to be concerned about our deteriorating trade balance, about our escalating national debt. But he doesn't really articulate the right solutions. It's not about just hiring smarter negotiators. That's not what's going to do it. We have to radically transform this country back to what it used to be. We need massive cuts in government spending. We need to abolish agencies and departments. We need free markets. We need to get rid of this welfare state. We need to acknowledge the problems that exist. You know, you talked earlier about, you know, the, the, the fact that we haven't had this day of reckoning yet because the masses still believe that the Federal Reserve saved us. They still think their policy worked. They still think there's a real recovery here. They still think the Fed is going to embark on rate tightening. That isn't even close to true. Let's talk They're about it. Let's start walking through it because I skipped this network break to give you more time. Uh, what we just saw in China, what we are seeing in Greece, what we're seeing with the yuan being lowered. Walk us through each of those and then give us the big picture. Well, first of all, nobody is talking about the real story of the Chinese yuan, right? People are missing this. Everybody's focusing on the devaluation, which is tiny, 2 or 3%. What is important is the principle here. China said that they want their currency not to necessarily be pegged to the dollar, but to kind of reflect fundamentals. Everybody forgets that the dollar has risen maybe 30 percent against a basket of currencies over the past couple of years. That means the Chinese yuan has also risen by the same percentage because it's been pegged to the dollar. And China is saying we don't want to be pegged to the dollar. We want our currency to be more in line with other currencies. And the big problem is going to happen when the dollar reverses. This is a dollar bubble. And so the next time the dollar starts to go down, China's not going to catch it. China's not going to have our back. When the dollar was falling from 2001 to 2008, China was there to keep buying U.S. treasuries and mitigate the dollar's decline. And in the currency wars in 2010 and 2011, China was buying dollars and buying treasuries to prevent its currency from rising. So that, this is huge. You're saying now that they're going to let the yuan just basically free fall uh, the, and not back the dollar up? Could this signify the end of dollar hegemony? No, what I'm saying is when this dollar bubble bursts and the dollar starts to fall, right, the Chinese are going to let their currency rise. They're not going to try to keep their, do their currency weak with the dollar. They're not going to buy all these treasuries to suppress the value of the yuan. They're going to let their currency rise with all the other currencies. Of the oh, world. so you see it as a, that they're going to stop manipulating their currency and just let it float. They're not going to let it freely float, but they will manage it higher, just like they've managed it lower. And that is bad news for the U.S. because that means upward pressure on long term interest rates. Sure. That means consumer prices are going to go up because the Chinese have been helping to keep our inflation in check by absorbing it for us. They've been taking the bullets for us. 
But what the Chinese are now saying to anybody who's smart enough to listen is they're not going to do that anymore. We are on our own. When the dollar starts to fall, we're not going to count on China to provide that cushion like it did before, which means we're going to have to deal with the impact of a weak dollar with higher domestic consumer prices and higher long term interest rates. And this could be the beginning. This is like the first shot that nobody's heard around the world that ends this currency war and the United States ends up being the loser and we have a real dollar crisis and then we might actually end up with that hyperinflation. You know, the, the, the Keynesians, the Paul Krugmans, they're taking this premature victory laps. They're saying all the people like Peter Schiff who are predicting inflation, it didn't happen. It's going to happen. It's just happening later. And because they engineered this sucker's rally in the dollar, the dollar is just going to crash from a higher precipice. Sure. That's and the, the, the crisis is going to happen later, but means it's going to be that much worse because we have exacerbated all the problems by delaying the consequences. Now, again, you, you've been very successful predicting markets. That's how you've made billions of dollars for your clients. I'm just a layperson that sits here and tries to study this and the basics. And I have people on uh, like Harry Dent, then I have people on like you, I have uh, you know, a, a, a lot of other analysts on, and they all generally agree we're going towards a bubble implosion, a group of bubble implosions, and that this currency war can't go on forever and QE can't go on forever. But he thinks that they're printing all the money and issuing the money to cover up the deflation. I get we've had some deflation, but at a certain point, Weimar Republic, Zimbabwe, hundreds of other, Mexico... There's a devaluation that comes home, and then the, the, the value of the money is lost in every case in history. So I don't understand uh, how then we're not going to see uh, faster inflation. Explain to me the two different schools of thought, because both ways are bad. And then tell us, do you think things are deteriorating faster? Is the moment of reckoning uh, about to be here? Again, we are going to see more inflation. We're already seeing it in, in ways that are not being measured or called inflation. You got a bubble in the stock market. You got a bubble in real estate market. Uh, you've got bubbles going on in, in, in rare cars or fine art. Uh, prices are rising all around us, yet it's not considered inflation if it's an asset price that's going up, but it's still inflation that's driving the increase in those prices. Also, rents are rising very sharply. For some reason, that doesn't get captured in the CPI. We know college tuition is rising. We know health care costs are rising. Insurance rates are rising. Taxes are rising. We know the price of food is going up. All sorts of prices are rising, yet for some reason, that doesn't show up in the government calculated numbers. I mean, I think that's very convenient, but I don't think it's honest. And I think that anybody that wants to hang their hat on these government created numbers as proof there's no inflation, you know, you have to realize the government uh, has a significant interest in under sure. inflation. And well, they, they admit, I mean, they admit they cook the um, unemployment numbers, the inflation numbers. I mean, all of it, they admit it's cooked. Yeah. And the unemployment numbers, you know, the, the official rate means nothing. When you have a collapse in the labor force, we have the lowest labor force participation since 1976. We have the lowest homeowner homeownership rate since 1967. People are dropping out in droves. People who are working part time, they want to work full time, but those jobs don't exist anymore. Yet they're still counted as being employed just because they have a lousy part time job. But these numbers don't sell the whole story. The fact that guys like Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump are getting the most crowds, that tells you the real story. The people are fed up. They are not living in a fantasy recovery created uh, by the media sure. or by Wall Street. They're living in the reality of this Obama recession. So what so happens as the fantasy fog lifts? Won't that just accelerate the decline? A, B, if we are going into uh, a major correction, what do you expect it to look like? What could yeah. the next shoe to drop be? Look, the only thing holding it together is the is the false belief that the Fed has finished printing money, that QE is over, that the Fed's going to raise rates, that it's mission accomplished, right, that everything is fine, right? Well, you know, it wasn't mission accomplished uh, for the war on terror just because George Bush was on an aircraft carrier, uh, you know, declaring that mission was accomplished. Well, it's not accomplished for the Fed, right? They have only just begun to print. This is a pause. QE is not over. QE4, QE5, the Fed is just getting started. The balance sheet is not going to shrink. It is going to explode out of control. 
It's four and a half trillion now. It's not going down. It's going up towards 10 trillion. It's going higher. As, as soon as people get their arms around that reality, then it's going to be like a watershed, right? It's going to be like opening up a dam and the dollar is going to tumble. And that is going to be a game changer. And China has already said, we're going to get out of the way. We're not going to get drowned in, in that deluge. We are going to let our currency sure. go up. They're not going to sink with the American Titanic. Sure. Well, it has sent their stock market back up now for the best in two months since they did this. But, I mean, isn't it overvalued? It's doubled in the last few years. And, and, and what do you expect to see happen in China? How will that affect us? Well, the Chinese market is pretty inexpensive. I mean, take a look at it. I mean, the Chinese market is still a lot lower than it was in 2007. I mean, look at the Nasdaq. You want to see something expensive? Look over there. You know, people are exaggerating the decline in the st Chinese stock market. China's stock market is positive on the year. The U.S. market is down this year. China had a big drop only because it had a huge rally right before. There was a spike in volatility in the Chinese market. That's all. There wasn't a market crash there. And I don't think there's going to be a market crash there. I actually don't even think there's going to be a market crash in the United States. There should be. And if the Fed did the right thing, there would be. But they're not going to do the right thing. They're going to print a lot of money. OK, so what's the time frame in your mind then? Look, something's going to happen by next year because everybody expects the Fed to raise rates this year. And if they do, if they come forward with a meaningless quarter point rate hike, that's not going to be enough uh, to prop up the dollar. The Fed is going to have to do more. But I think a quarter of a point is too much for this fragile economy. Look at the first half GDP. It was 1.45 percent. Atlanta Fed GDP now this week, they lowered their forecast for Q3 to 0.7. Wow. 0.7. A year ago, the economy grew 5 percent in the third quarter. Peter Schiff, now stay there. I want to come back and, and walk through this because, again, I'm not an economist like you or a money manager, but it, it just seems crazy. They're now saying don't raise interest rates because of China. So, so uh, damn if we do, damn if we don't. Erwin Schiff's his name, best-selling underground author, a uh, really great radio interview. He used to be on GCN Radio Network for about five years at night, syndicated on at least 50 stations around the country. And he just wrote books explaining that the IRS was never properly ratified for the amendment in 1913. Uh, and it was all documented and that uh, they made you waive your Fourth Amendment rights when you fill out the IRS forms. They also went after a federal a treasury officer, armed officer of the IRS, uh, of course, who we've had on as a frequent guest on this show, Joe Bannister. And twice he had jury trials and they didn't put him in prison because he had juries. And this was for giving speeches saying the IRS is a fraud. That's like arresting you for saying Planned Parenthood sells body parts. And you know uh, those, uh, what was it, 12 different IRS agents that were in full-page ads in USA Today? Of the 12, nine are in prison. Nine. So the IRS is the Gestapo in this country. The IRS is like the KGB or the NKVD, the internal police that politically, the commissars that go after people. Uh, and it's shameful. It needs to be abolished. It needs to be gotten rid of. And Rand Paul, of course, has called for that. We need to see that as well from folks like Donald Trump. It can selectively destroy whoever you want. Fortune, money, they've all done it. 30 different tax preparers, 50 different tax preparers. The Wall Street Journal a few years ago had 100. And they gave 100 different answers, 30 different answers, 50 different answers. You cannot pay it correctly. It's designed to screw you over. It's designed to put you in prison. And now we have the emails. We know they're targeting libertarian conservatives. And I was asking him how, because I've, I've never had Peter Schiff, who's separate from his dad, author, researcher, manages billions at Europac.com. I never really bring up his dad. And I brought him up a few weeks ago, four weeks ago when he was on. He said, yeah, dad's in prison, got you know all these years left for publishing this book. He was ordered not to for saying the IRS is a fraud. That's how scared they are. And I was asking him again, how's your dad? And he said, well, I, I don't know if I should make this announcement. It's not public yet. Uh, but the family would like to get a chance to see him before. And now I'll let uh, Peter Schiff uh, talk about this on air. It's some really sad news.
um, for this political prisoner uh, who I knew so well. Uh, Peter, tell us about your dad and what's happened. Yeah, well, he is, you know, a political prisoner. He's not even kind of uh, a pseudo political prisoner. He's he's, he's the r new real deal here in the United States because he is in jail for his political beliefs. He's not in jail for breaking any laws. Uh, and, you know, you mentioned, you know, uh, the, the tax code. His real uh, issue has always been that uh, the Internal Revenue Code, the laws were written voluntarily. You hear it's based on voluntary compliance. Well, that means you're not required to pay. And the reason that all the laws were written voluntarily is because otherwise they would have violated numerous provisions of the Constitution. Uh, the Constitution is really inconsistent with a, uh, a mandatory direct tax on your income. Sure, they uh, get you to opt in to a corporate contract, then that's how they come after you. It's not really a corporate contract. I mean, the, 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 the laws were written voluntarily. If you just ask the IRS, is the, is the, internal, is the tax system based on voluntary compliance or compulsory compliance? I'll tell you it's voluntary and then you'll say well but i don't want to volunteer they say, well you have to volunteer well but then it's compulsory no it's voluntary you know and the reason they're, they're, they want it to be voluntary is because if it was illegal right you can you can lie on your tax return you can do whatever you wanted on it and they couldn't use it against you uh because of the fifth amendment but also you know there's all sorts of violations of the constitution in the um in the income tax i'm just I'm trying to uh I keep I forgot that I had this program up and I'm getting I'm getting phone calls. Uh, I, I have a do not disturb. Yeah, so there's all sorts of uh, ways that a, a compulsory income tax would violate the law. You know, the income tax is based on self-assessment. You're supposed to assess yourself. And if you don't do that, there's no legal authority for the government to do it. So there's a lot of legal arguments. Sure, they get you to waive your Fourth and Fifth Amendment on its face. Yeah. And of course, the taxing provisions of the Constitution that were not changed by the 16th Amendment, you know, Congress, if they want to lay level a, a direct tax on income, they still have to apportion it. The 16th Amendment didn't change that. The 16th Amendment just said, well, you know, if you don't want to apportion the income tax, then you have to levy it as an excise tax. But the government's not doing that. I mean, the government is violating numerous Supreme Court decisions in the way it, it, it enforces the income tax. And, you know, my father just tries to point all these things out. But of course, you know, the courts are routinely rubber stamping government action that violates the Constitution. I mean, there's really, you know, as far as the government is concerned, there's nothing, or rather, as far as the courts are concerned, there's nothing that the government can't do. The government is in no way inhibited or restrained by the Constitution. The government has unlimited power. And, you know, that's one of the things that my father still never really understood or accepted, because even though he's been in jail for 10 years, he continues to fight uh, thinking that he's going to get out, thinking he's going to get justice in a justice system that has no justice. And, you know, which gets me to the, the news that we want to talk about is that my father, who is 87 and who has been in jail for 10 years, was just diagnosed uh, with terminal lung cancer. And, um, you know, initially he told me the prison doctor said he had maybe four to six months to live, but then I'm not really sure. I tried to talk. He may have longer than that. I don't know. Maybe he has a year. It's hard to say. Uh, you know, they did have a, a, a cancer specialist that, that talked to him. But, you know, he's still in jail and he still has another year and a half or two to go. And so in theory, he, he won't survive the rest of his sentence. And so his, he would have an amount amounts to a, you know, a life sentence for a nonviolent a tax crime. And, um, you know, but we are still trying to get him out on a compassionate release. The, 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 the crazy part about it is my father doesn't even want to get out yet on compassionate release. He still wants to get out on the merits of his legal arguments. But I think we've been able to persuade him uh, to, uh, you know, to allow uh, the compassionate release process. But, you know, who knows how long this thing is going to take? The whole prison system is so inefficient. Uh, you know, well, it's very sad to me because I probably had dinner with your dad when he would come to Austin to give speeches. And in a few events I spoke at in, in Dallas and once in Vegas, probably had dinner with him 10 times. And man, the stories he tells and the st I mean, he is like a real uh, Archie Bunker type guy. Uh, real Americana, and, and it's just, it's so sad to hear all the persecution he's gone through. But they hated his guts because he was traveling the whole U.S. speaking to crowds of thousands. He was on the radio. He was selling books by the tens of thousands a month. I mean, he was really giving them a problem, and they uh, threw his butt in jail, and now I guess they hope to see him die there. Yeah, I and mean, they wanted to make an example of him. They wanted people, hey, don't fight the IRS or you'll end up like Erwin Schiff, right? You'll end up in jail. And that's the whole purpose of a political prisoner. You're trying to send a message. I mean, you're, clearly my father is not a criminal. The most you can say about my father is that he's mistaken, but we don't put 
people in jail for having good faith beliefs that, that turn out to be wrong. But he's clearly it's, right, though. Yeah, well, well, you know, I think he's right about a lot of things. But I know there's no nobody can argue that my father is insincere, that he's some kind of con man, that he doesn't believe what he says. Of course he believes what he says. There's no there's no doubt about well, remember, it. Remember, the judge said, do not publish the book anymore. You can walk away right now. He could have put another book out. He, he said no and started putting the book back out. Yeah, well, they actually banned his, they banned him from selling his book. And I think it's the only a time that's happened since Lolita. But they didn't ban the book itself. And, of course, the book is the federal mafia. Yeah. They just banned. They just banned my father from selling it. But you know, here's another interesting angle to talk about. You know, because I, when I talk to his caseworker, because I'm trying to get him released into my care, and one of the things would happen is if you know if he ends up uh, getting out of jail and able to live with my house, I have to make sure that I get rid of all my guns. That I'm not allowed to have any guns in the house. If you have an you know an ex felon, which is so ridiculous that I have to surrender my Second Amendment rights in order to care for my sick father. I mean, the reality of it is my father is practically blind, you know, and all my guns are locked up in safes. Even if I gave my father the combinations, he still couldn't open them. You know? And <laughs> even, I don't even think, I don't even think he could load the gun, let alone shoot it. And yet just because he's a tax offender, he can't be in the house. If anybody has a firearm for self-defense, so I have to disarm myself in order to take care of my father. I mean, that's just another you know, violation of, you know, the Second Amendment. But, the, you know, everything the government does violates their constitutional rights. So, you know, why should they why should they stop there? Well, he's in the federal prison there in Dallas. Folks need to contact the Federal Bureau of Prisons uh, and just say, release the political prisoner, Erwin Schiff. And I would do it nicely, but I would say, look, he's got terminal lung cancer. Normally, they, they, they release nonviolent uh, quote offenders when they have something terminal because it's a drain on the system uh, this is ridiculous he's been in there 10 years for selling a book that says the irs is a fraud that's like going to jail for saying hillary clinton's a witch i mean it's just a prima facie fact and now with all this irs news of them persecuting everyone uh, it just really is a cherry on top of how evil this government is who are these people man i would feel like I mean, I feel like if I do something bad, it's going to come back on me. I wasn't taught that. I just feel that. I can't screw over good people. And I wonder how the government, I wonder how that judge sits around knowing that they put some guy in jail for 10 plus years and he may die there for putting out a book. I mean, it, it's just ridiculous. Well, I mean, obviously it's more than just the book. I mean, that they're going to say, well, you know, he was advocating non-payment of taxes. He was helping people. What my father was trying to do was educate people. Uh, as he understood the law and he encouraged people to make their own decisions. And I always remember when my dad gave seminars, he would always encourage lawyers and accountants to show up. If he ever talked to somebody about not paying taxes, he would say, look, bring your accountant, bring your lawyer. He would always say that on my show. He'd go, I'm not telling you to do this. It's what I do. But here's the facts. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I've sat around many people who have admitted to me, you know, I've seen the, you know, where lawyers and have said, look, you know, your dad is technically right. He's legally right, but the government won't let him get away with it. I mean, that's an important thing when people lawyers. I've talked to judges who have told me that, OK, yes, technically your dad may be right, but it doesn't matter. Well, shouldn't the law matter? Are we a nation of law or are we a nation? Well, of here's the bottom line. Your dad's the kind of guy that made America great. He's willing to go to jail and stay there and won't recant for the truth. I mean, that's what we're missing in this country. If more people were like your dad, we wouldn't have to go to jail for the truth because we wouldn't allow this to happen. Yeah, I, you know, it, it, he's very rare in that sense. Look, I don't do it. I mean, I pay taxes. I pay a lot of taxes. And, and um, you know, not because I believe I'm legally required to do it. But they're the mafia, they'll break your legs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm like the, I'm like the store owner that pays the protection money because I don't want to stand up to the mob. Well, my dad stood up to the mob and, you know, he's been in jail for 10 years. And, you know, that's the spirit that made this country. I mean, look at our founding fathers. I mean, how easy would it have been for George Washington, a very wealthy guy, and all the other framers? I mean, they didn't have to stand up to King George. They didn't have to stand up to those principles. They had good lives, and they risked it all for, for, for a concept, for freedom, uh, for an idea, right? And most Americans, you know, weren't, weren't even involved in that. But can you imagine today, I mean, would we have had any kind of revolution if the, the type of Americans who are around today were around, you know, in 1776, if, if America, you know, well, these, we, you know, we'd still be ruled by the king, by, uh, by England. But, you know, who knows? We might even be better off, you know, if, if you know, they, they, the British did a pretty good job with Hong Kong. 
Uh, so maybe they would have done a good job with us if we had stayed uh, under the crown. But, you know, what, what Americans uh, are willing to accept today, the type of taxation, the type of regulation is off the charts compared to the tiny little bit of government that Americans were protesting uh, from from King George. Right? You're absolutely I mean, right. Peter Schiff's our guest. Europac.com. Uh, we're going to get the specifics up in the next day or so. I'll probably launch it Monday because Friday's a bad day to do it. We're going to take the video from this live radio TV show, put out a call to arms politically Monday with an article, with the addresses for folks uh, to just say, have some basic decency and, you know, let this guy out. They let the average murderer out of state prison within four years, federal within 10. Those are national numbers. Your dad's been in over 10 years for his political speech, uh, and do they really want to make him a martyr where he dies? I mean, it'd be better for him to get out, see his grandkids, spend some time with you. Right, Peter? Well, absolutely. And the thing with the government, they don't care if they let a murderer out, because what's the worst thing he can do? Murder some people? They don't care about that. But a tax protester, that really scares them, because he gets out, he educates people, he shines a spotlight on the illegal actions of government, and the government is afraid of that. The government wants to keep my father in jail to keep him quiet, right? They That's right, and let's be fair. He said he's not going to shut up. I mean, he, he, he stands by what he stands by. Yeah, I mean, look, he's still there in jail fighting this fight. You know, he still hasn't willing to concede that he's lost, even though he spent the last 10 years of his life in jail. And, you know, ultimately, in the long run, he has his books out there. I think he'll be vindicated, uh, you know, in, in the things that he stood up for. But it might not be in his lifetime, but it may be maybe in my children's lifetime. Well, America, freedom to fascism really scared him, too, Aaron Russo. There's so many. Congressman Hansen fought the IRS. They put him in jail and tortured him. I mean, folks, let me tell you, these are real heroes for this republic that have stood up against this organization. They come after you. They try to take everything Aaron Russo had. Uh, when he put that film out, then he suddenly died of cancer. I mean, they mean business, and it is so dangerous. We didn't have time to get to calls today. we got a final segment. I want you to get into the economy when we come yep. back. Peter Schiff, Europac.com. Stay with us. We're going to go to break here in just a moment. And, and this is what I keep trying to hammer home to people. I've sat here and watched them kill and set up and destroy hundreds of people. And they've tried a lot of dirty tricks on us and had me beat up in a parking lot and told me to shut up. And I mean, this is real. Now, we've gotten so effective and so big that whatever calculation they've made, they've left us alone at this point. Uh, in about the last year, man, they tried a lot of dirty tricks behind the scenes. I'm not going to even get into it, but it was like a movie. Do not take talk radio for granted. Do not take libertarian ideas for granted. There's a big examiner article, Drudge, Fox News could be censored under new federal rules, expert warns. I've seen 10 different members of the administration call for the fairness doctrine to be brought back. They're trying to arrest Joe Arpaio and they're suing him right now. I mean, just understand, they're coming after us because they're in trouble. That's why. Pray for us. Financially support us. Go to InfoWarsLife.com. We've got brain force that's got a lot of just healthy, good compounds that optimize uh, your brain activity. You've heard the rave reviews. It's amazing. InfoWarsLife.com, your purchase of InfoWarsLife.com products, funds or operations, super male vitality. Go read the over 500 reviews just for super male and super female vitality. Known concentrated herbs that are known to boost vitality, energy, libido. Try it. And then I know you'll be a repeat customer because the formulas are the Rolls Royce for a very low price. Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. Become an Infowars Nightly News subscriber. See all my films. $5.95 a month. 20 people can use each membership. So we have our own platform when they censor us. I want to thank all the members of Prison Planet. Dot TV and the Nightly News as well. But Super Mel Vitality. Uh, X2 and Brain Force is all back in stock. We got plenty of the uh, Super Mel Vitality right now. Brain Force will sell out by Monday. Try it for yourself. Experience it. We'll be back. I'm Alex Jones. Welcome back. Alex Jones here. Infowars.com. Up on screen, a small business person has Uncle Sam as a partner. Again, a small business person person has Uncle Sam as a partner, a partner who puts up no money, does no work, and wants 30 or 40 percent, and will throw you in prison for saying that. 
And again, they want to intimidate and shut everybody up. But I'm telling you, it's going too far. All right, we got about six minutes left in this segment. I'm going to cover news, clips, special reports, and your phone calls next hour. And what would war with Russia be like? The Pentagon's been wargaming it. Uh, Jeb Bush is back out promoting torture for the very groups the West is funding. Uh, just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but finishing up with uh, our guest from Europac.com, Peter Schiff. Uh, Peter, getting back into China, the economy, uh, what's happening? I mean, do you think it's going to degenerate quicker, as a lot of people are saying, or you're saying it's next year? What's the next shoe to drop for you that you're watching? Well, again, the only shoe, I think, is going to be the realization that the Fed is uh, not finished with quantitative easing and that the U.S. recovery uh, isn't real, that we're back in recession. In fact, all of the economic problems that created the Great Recession uh, still exist. In fact, they've been exacerbated by the very cure that the Fed uh, chose uh, to try to heal us, right? The, the, the cheap money, quantitative easing, 0% interest rates, it was the Fed's manipulation of money supply and interest rates that inflated the bubbles. You know, sure, they had help from Congress, but I think the chief enabler is the Federal Reserve, and they've done a lot of damage. And I think when people come to terms with this reality, it's going to be a huge game changer. I think the bottom is going to drop out of the dollar in a very big way. I think you're going to see a spectacular reversal in gold prices, silver prices, commodity prices. When people realize that, you know, we are just going to print and print and print. The Fed is just getting started. Uh, the helicopters are still in the hangars. They're getting warmed up. Uh, this is going to be, <laughs> more, you know, more money printing. And this is not going to end well. This is not the happy picture, the smiley face that Janet Yellen is putting on this or all the Wall Street economists. And there's not a lot of time. You know, people have been riding this bubble on the dollar. Uh, the U.S. stock market made new highs. Uh, people need to act now. You know, people need to open up accounts, you know, at, with me at Euro Pacific's Capital so that they can get their money out of U.S. assets, get out of Dodge before the bullets start flying. Uh, you got to get into foreign stocks and the, and the right stocks. I mean, there are certain countries, Switzerland, Singapore, New Zealand, I mean, Hong Kong, there are places that you should invest to escape the carnage. And you got to get out of U.S. currency. You got to pick the best foreign currencies. You got to own real money. You got to own gold and silver. You got to look at the opportunity in the mining shares that have been beaten down because people have no idea what's going on. The people who have been selling gold, selling gold stocks, these are the same well, guys sure. buying the subprime mortgages. Well, the elites, the elites are hoarding and buying gold. That's admitted. And gold's gone back up a little bit. I just don't see, there's got to be with in, in an inflationary system, even if we're in a depression, gold's got to go up. We know in the Great Depression, towards the end, it did go way back up. Yeah, look, again, people have confidence in the central bankers. They have confidence in Yellen, just the way they had confidence in not only Greenspan in the 1990s. And that was a disaster. That was false confidence. And it's the same people that have bought into the same, you know, monetary magic. They've been fooled again uh, by the sleight of hand of the Fed. And they have no idea what's right around the corner. If they, if they were surprised by the financial crisis, they ain't seen nothing yet. Because this next crisis is going to be much worse, but it's also going to be much different. Because it's not going to be a credit crisis. It's going to be a currency crisis. It's going to be a crisis in the U.S. dollar. Right? You don't have to worry about the yuan going down. It's the dollar going down. We are going to win this currency war, which means every American who is not prepared will lose. And they just hope those dollars don't come back and they can hide it and, and maybe lower oil prices to cover that. But it's certainly a balancing act. We're, we've all got front row seats to it. Peter Schiff, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you again, hopefully, in a few weeks. Thanks, Alex. Have a good weekend. You bet. You too. And uh, tell your dad when you talk to him. The cavalry's coming. We're going to try to put some pressure on next week. And obviously, you can work with us on that.